Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at macOS Catalina and everything new that it has to offer. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first major thing here is iTunes, of course, is now dead. It's unfortunate, but it has now been divided up into three separate applications. So you have your music app, your podcast app, and your TV app. So the music app is all about Apple Music. It's basically Apple Music, designed for Apple Music, but you still have the iTunes Store, which is located right here. So if you want to still buy songs, you can. Also, you have your music library, so everything that you have uh, from iTunes, anything you've bought, of course, is still here. It's basically similar controls and stuff to iTunes, it's just not iTunes. And other stuff like your radio is also here as well. Finally, on the Mac, we have a dedicated podcast app, just like you do on iOS. So you can browse for a podcast, you can see your Listen Now section, and it automatically will download the latest episodes for you, of course. And then the Apple TV app is basically what we find on the Apple TV. It gives you recommendations of what to watch. This is also where you're going to be able to find all of your Apple TV Plus content whenever that is available. And you just can check out also the Apple TV channels. And also up here at the top, this is where you're going to find uh, your library. So if you have any movies that you've purchased or rented, you can still buy and rent them, of course, but this is where you can also do that as well. So even though Apple did kill off iTunes, I think they did a good job of dividing it up into the three separate applications. Now the next thing here is no support for 32-bit applications. So for example, one of my 32-bit applications was uh, Photoshop Elements 9. I know I'm a little old school, that's okay, but that did not work. So if you have any 32-bit apps before you actually install Mac OS, you need to either find a replacement or see if there is a newer version of that app. Only 64-bit applications are going to work on Mac OS Catalina. We now have automatic dark mode. So as you can see, if you go into your system preferences and go to general, you can select the auto for automatic dark mode. I really like that feature. If you have a device such as an old iPod that you still want to be able to sync with your computer, well, you may think you can no longer do that since iTunes is gone, but don't worry, you can still do that. It is now located in the Finder. So you simply go to your Finder, go over here to your locations, and click on the device. And now you have all of your settings, your software, where you can sync your music, podcast, audiobooks, all that good stuff. So if you need to sync any of your devices now, it is done in the Finder window. Now, I don't want to show you here because, well, I have a bunch of photos, but the Photos app has been slightly tweaked and redesigned, similar to what it is on uh, iOS. So the bigger previews, the division into the year months and all that. So it has been redesigned as well. Notes app has been redesigned just like it was on iOS. So you now have things such as shared folders, uh, gallery view, better checklists, basically all the same features on iOS. Another thing like on iOS is the Reminders app has got a major overhaul. It is all new and it is a lot better than the previous application. Safari also has just a tiny new feature which is, has the updated start page. So you now have Siri suggestions on your start page, your favorites page. And then also there's a new weak password warning in Safari. Now the mail application, again, I can't show you that because you'll see all my mail, but you can now block individual senders and there is now the option to unsubscribe from emails uh, at the top of the header. You can also mute email threads, uh, similar to how you can mute an iMessage thread. And it's got just a slight redesign, some different fonts, bigger menus, and a few things like that. Now something I really wish I could try out, but I currently do not have an iPad that is running iPadOS. Uh, I'm currently uh, trying to decide which new iPad to buy. Uh, let me know in the comments, but uh, Sidecar is a brand new feature here in Catalina and basically allows you to use your iPad as a secondary display or even a mirrored display, kind of similar how you use the Apple TV and AirPlay 
But the neat thing with the iPad is you'll be able to use gestures as well as Apple Pencil on your iPad uh, to control things on your Mac. So that's going to be pretty cool. And you also will have a bar on the side of the display uh, with commonly used features such as like hiding the menu bar in your dock. Now something important to note though, the sidecar is not compatible with all Macs or iPads. So uh, Macs are kind of weird. It's only ones with a butterfly keyboard. And then iPads, uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to look up the list and put it on the screen or something. Now another thing neat with the uh, iPad stuff is we now have the Project Catalyst, which is gonna allow iPad apps to become Mac apps. So they'll be able to run iPad apps on your Mac. So it's gonna make it a little easier for developers. You know, they won't have to develop a whole new iPad application, or a whole new Mac application. Um, so they can just use the iPad one. And I believe the current example of that would be, there's a new Twitter application. I believe it is on the Catalyst. We now have the screen time here on Catalina as well. You can see how much you're using your computer, uh, how much you're on it. Maybe, you know, to help you not be on it as much, but it's basically the same concept as iOS. Now for some security enhancements, uh, it's basically the same ones that are on iOS. There's a better gatekeeper, so it's going to be more strict on installing applications. There's also data protection, so Catalina is going to notify you if an app wants to use your information or if it's using uh, something else and wants your permission. They also have the activation lock, which has been on the iPhones and iPads for a while now. But if your Mac has the new T2 chip, you can now do the activation lock. So if your computer is lost or stolen, uh, you're going to be the only one that can activate it and get back into it. And then there's a few other security tweaks here and there. There's a new Find My application. It combines the Find My Friends and Find My iPhone into one application. So now if you lose one of your devices, you can go on there, see where it is. Or if you still use Find My Friends, you can go in there and look at it as well. You can now approve with your Apple Watch on your Mac, so you can use it to view passwords or approve an application installation. Now the accessibility on macOS has changed quite a bit. There are a ton of new features in that. You'll have to read through all of them, uh, but the biggest one of course is the voice control. So you can fully control your Mac with your voice now, just like you can in iOS 13. If you go into your system preferences now, you have a better Apple ID uh, account information screen. Now, I'm not going to go into it because I don't want you to see all my stuff. But if you go into system preferences, you can find it right up here at the top. And if you click on the Apple ID, notice you also have your family sharing here. But if you click on your Apple ID, it'll take you in there. You can see all your devices, all your payment information and everything. It's a lot better than what it was on the previous version of Mac. A few other minor things here and there. QuickTime Player now supports Picture-in-Picture. Picture. The Home application uh, now supports the new HomeKit Secure Video, so you can view that and control that on your Mac. There's also a bunch of new international features such as multilingual setup. And then a few other minor features are iCloud Drive folder sharing, and you can also restore your Mac from a snapshot now, which is pretty cool. But yeah, guys, I kind of went through that a little quick, but let me know uh, if there's any features I missed. I pretty much hit all the highlights. Uh, there are a ton of new features in Catalina. Let me know, do you have Catalina? Do you like it? Is it worth the upgrade over, what was it, Mojave, I believe? I don't know. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, as always. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.